Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this virtual bridge session. Uh, today's session is going to be uh, somewhat informal and discursive, and, and we're hoping for some, some good input because this is going to be entirely led by you, the audience. Maybe not if you're watching the recording, however, you've missed your chance, but you are going to get to hear some interesting perspectives. Mm -hmm. So what I need from you is your creative thinking hats on, or your reflective hat, perhaps, um, and to think about uh, the past oh, couple of months and what's been going on and allow you to have a platform for one minute. Uh, now, I haven't done my homework. I was supposed to set up a timer that would come up on screen. So uh, I'm afraid I just haven't done that. Uh, so I'm just going to have to somehow mark about a minute. Um, so I'm talking for a second and we're going to be quiet for a few seconds and let you think about a topic you'd like one minute platform for um, to have a little bit of a soapbox session on. Have a think. And well, Kenji is going to lead the way, that's uh, so over to Kenji first and foremost. I've got a clock in front of me. <clears throat> so one minute, uh, my, I, I really like assessment. I, I like doing assessment. I think assessment's really important. I like the idea of formative assessment and the idea that if you ask your students something that they should have an opportunity to essentially gauge where they are in the course or in the subject area that they are. How much do they know? How much do they understand? Where are they? What's the gap between where they are now and where they want to go? That's awesome. Um, and also, once they've done their formative assessment, then they have a, a chance to review where they are and they have another opportunity based on the feedback that they get to have another go and, and, and see if they've improved. I, I, and I think if all of those parts are in place, Excellent. Now, the bugbear that I have is the, the kind of interfaces that we have to build those kind of question sets. So if you're using a, a platform like Moodle or, or Blackboard or Canvas or, or whatever it happens to be, I, I find that the process of actually typing up or, or writing or creating the questions is not as fluid as I would like it to be. Like it, it's, it's usually a fairly painful process. I mean, I, I know that questions are hard to write and it takes a while, but I would just like the actual authoring process to be a little bit easier. Was that like a minute? <laughs> I think that was pretty good for a minute there. Uh, so any feedback on that? Any discussion around this? Walter comes in. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I thought for a moment you were describing solar, Kenji, and it's an absolutely torturous um, editing tool. Not as bad as the previous version, but still very difficult. Um, so what, do you think it would help if there was a, it, within each college or from SQA, there was more of a templated approach to submitting questions and answers for inclusion. I, I think Owen had, had an idea there um, or, or had put up his hand. So possibly Owen has a solution or not. <laughs> Unless that was for another subject going on too. And, uh... no, and that my finger in the air was just to apologise for running to plug my computer in there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, temp templating is is interesting, but you have to remember that if you're if you look at the lowest common denominator for assessment, you're probably talking about a multiple choice question. So, in in that sense. The format is is really predefined, so it is just a single question, um, a correct answer, a number of distractors, and if if you have time, if it's for formative purposes, some some feedback. Um, and so we are talking about e-assessment here, not not necessarily um, some manual process. Because if you've got a lot of people, especially if they're working from a distance, you, you want to have some kind of automated system. So templating to an extent doesn't help you, doesn't really get you there. Um, because it, it, essentially the structure of it is set up in such a way that it's just, it's a very laborious interface that most online systems have to get you to fill out individual multiple choice questions. So in the, in the past, 
I've seen and I've used these kind of, um, they're called parsing tools. So you're, you're encouraged to write the question in a Word document, for example, and then you put it into this piece of software and it reads all of your questions for you. And it spits out basically the, uh, a format that you can upload into Moodle or whatever, and it automatically creates the quiz for you. I think those, those tools are incredibly popular um, about 10 years ago. And, and most of them have just kind of dropped off the planet. Um, the only example that I know currently exists is in Dumfries and Galloway College, where um, Steve Baxter wrote a script. Um, Steve, which Jamie knows, see, it's a just scripting wizard kind of guy. Um, <clears throat> he wrote the script where he takes the SQA nabs um, to the PDF, and, and they're filled with all the exemplar questions. So he, he just he runs the script over the PDF and it spits out a whole bunch of middle questions automatically. Now, yeah, it's, it's really, really clever. Um, I mean, it, he's, and he's putting it, um, he's going to put it as a, an open license, but it, it works in one specific set of uh, papers. And, and I think he's looking for a community to maybe help sort of take that a little bit further, but I don't know. I, 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 Jamie, do you, do you have any ideas as to how to make that? I mean, you, you're all about, the middle and the online systems is there any way to make make my authoring hell a little bit easier oh see i've asked the it person to talk and and now you're struggling with the the mute and the mics ah oh, it's just making oh, me feel the hot key button isn't working on zoom <laughs> <laughs> i keep forgetting you can only do that in teams um well obviously i know um i've borrowed a lot of steve's code in the past i must admit and um it's usually just here's a zip file with some code in it um it, it is a question more about distributing that. Um, do, just, do, do you have a better idea about how do you author quiz questions, basically? I mean, that's that's what I would ideally want. I don't think um, I can come up with a better solution than Steve for the SQA stuff, certainly. Um, I think it's it's always a kind of an uphill struggle. Um, to, to, to get that first 95%, I think, um, is, is easy to get lectures. Here's a guy to set up a Moodle quiz. Um, here's the basics, here's the different types of questions. They'll use about 10% of the functionality, and that takes about 90% of the work. But to get that um, other 80% um, of the work, it's only about another 5% of the effort. But once they get a working solution, they don't kind of polish it off. I think it's just that, that final bit of quality that they struggle with. I mean, the, most lecturers I've found, if you, you put a guide in front of them, for instance, how to set up a Moodle, basic Moodle quiz, um, they, they, they can. Um, can set something up, but it's it's matching that obviously to, to I don't know, been a bit more varied. I think. I just I you, you know if in the past where I've I've worked with people and they've wanted to write twenty questions in in a VLE, um, honestly the the pain and effort it takes to just enter the information into the PC is it's such a laborious process. That I, I don't really blame them for not ever wanting to do it again. I don't. I don't know, um, Jake or, or or Caroline. Um, I'm not going to call you Jay Toten throughout this. <laughs> You're going to have to tell me your name. <laughs> um, hi, sorry, Caroline. Yes, Caroline. So I um I am quite new to teaching, so I'm kind of here just sort of spying and getting hints. So oh. I'm sorry, I probably won't um contribute much here. Sorry, <laughs> I was kind of coming to hope just to sort of learn from other people. So I probably yeah. don't have a lot of input just now, but I'll, I'll try. If I think there's something, I, I'll let you know. <laughs> we might get a minute from you on your experiences so far, but... Yeah. <laughs> okay. you, you, you can use the minute just to ask a question, um, just okay. if you're genuinely wanting to do something. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you guys carry on just now and I'll, I'll, um, I'll get back to you on that. Yes, thank you. And, 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 and sorry, Jay Toten. Yes, I know we've met. <laughs> Sorry, Henry, I didn't realise it's Jane. <laughs> Jane. Jane, 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 yeah. Jane. Right, okay, yeah. Jane. <laughs> like, Jane, have you have you ever had to write, like, assessments online? Um, not, no, not, well, uh, yes, I used to when I was in England. I was I was a principal examiner with an exam board in England. So I have right. done it from that side of you, but not from the Scottish side. So it's all, um, that sort of side, all these nabs is all very new to me. So I'm just... Um, I work at West Odeon College, as I said to you yeah. earlier, I'm, I'm one of the work-based assessors. So I'm, again, a bit like what Caroline said, I'm just here to just sort of like, just listen and absorb the information that's going on. Um, so I, I'm, I'm intrigued. So, mm -hmm. 
Sorry. With, when, when you're talking about the awarding body, so I know like city and guilds, um, they were they were the, one of the first awarding bodies to enforce the use of online assessment. Um, and their GOLA platform, um, mm-hmm. you, if you were if you're doing a, a CNG qualification, that for some of them you had to go onto GOLA and use it, um, right. and it was quite a traumatic experience for like a lot of lecturers because it, it, there wasn't much of a lead up. It was just like this is the way it is, <laughs> and you're going to do it. But like in the first year, they they had like a ridiculous number of people doing the assessments. It was like they they'd scored like four million in the first three years of that that process um people doing individual questions and and it, it then it just normalized it but i remember when they were taking me through the authoring process and it wasn't you know e- even for the in uh, working from the sort of back end of the interface um the whole authoring process was, wasn't an easy one having to put in all of those questions was was significantly time consuming although the, yeah. the, the, the i mean there, there were some shortcuts but but going back to Walter's point, isn't the point that, um, and I think Walter, if I'm not wrong, what you're getting at is um, we all know the uh, investment of time that's required, and but um, we probably are ending up with lots of people doing exactly the same thing and, and repeating it. Uh, and again, it comes around to the barriers to open education and open education resources in many ways and sharing that we uh, have been dealing with for a long time and been through however many systems as a, um, without actually, a, to my mind, getting to the heart of the, the barriers. Uh, I, I won't now, but a, a sneaky minute, but uh, uh, I think, um, I, and I started all the, my, the career as it's gone by um, creating an online self-assessment uh, quiz engine which delivered 300 multiple choice questions well a bank of 300 and um, written in javascript uh, back before vle's and god knows what um and um and so dear to my heart but um, it, it did go even back then that was a long time ago i'm um, thinking about why am i sharing this with all the other lecturers in scotland and why am i getting their questions because i know from first and experience how long it took to write and consider all those 300 questions that went in the question bank and then maintain them, of course. Yes, well, you will remember that JISC funded a project at City of Glasgow College, um, which produced, uh, well, John Casey actually produced a set of guides. Now, um, in all of this, um, in recent activity, I've never seen any reference whatsoever because people have been producing new guides, you know, the, the 10 things to do, the seven things to do, the 20 best things to do. So it, it kind of frustrates me that we've had people investing time and money in producing guides, n- not the least of which has been your own organization. But somehow or other people think that we have to go off and create another set of guides for the UC land, did you learn? for Microsoft Edu days, we still need another set of, sorry, I'm ranting now. That, that could have been your minute. <laughs> I think we'll call it my minute, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I, I'm just, uh, so the, the project that, that John had worked on um, is called the CITEA project, C-I-T-E-A, and they transferred, <clears throat> um, it's, it's a really interesting sort of quick course that just takes you through the process of writing assessment items and and some of the issues that you might have if you want to do it from a uh, an electronic point of view so the course was then put on to um, the open universities uh, platform um, and is, is shared openly now uh, across the sector so I, I frequently make reference to it because I, I was asked to write an assessment course and I just said what, what why use John's <laughs> he writes so much better than me um so um yeah that that's the one I, I refer to all the time and I, I really have a lot of time for John um and, and his course is is just filled with a lot of common sense just some nice fundamental tips about if you're looking at um developing uh e-assessment options for your courses. So I, I, I think we should pass pass on the opportunity for the golden minute to Caroline now, because <laughs> I'll end up talking about assessment forever. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I apologize. I really was, I did come on this today thinking I was going to hear other people and just be absorbing <laughs> really. So I, I'd kind of, um, 
a, I think what you guys are talking about just now is, is possibly, you know, it's a bit further down the line than I am at. So, yeah, I, to be honest, if you don't mind, I, I think I'll, I will... Um, well, Karen, yeah, can I just yeah, ask what what, yes. what what subject area are you teaching in? Um, I am st um, temporary um, uh, teaching in the design and media department and also in learner support. Right. So all of my the the teaching that I was doing was actually mostly finished. Okay. My block, you know, block one and block two, is a learner support. I've only been contacting them through email and at very limited kind of uh, capacity really so all this stuff as I'm trying to skill myself you know get myself ready for the next term when my next set of students will be then I will be um, uh, interacting and engaging online with them for the first you know block probably so I'm trying to, I'm trying to get myself um, as much knowledge as I can for that um, because I haven't really needed to do that as yet. I'm just, yeah, as I say, I'm just trying to get all the, 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 the tools I need for the so upcoming. Which, yeah. which college are you based? Oh, in sorry, or? I'm West College Scotland in Clyde Bank. Oh, oh where Jamie is. Yes, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. So, um, Jamie's lovely, yeah. by the way. If you if you ever get stuck, <laughs> just just tap Jamie on the shoulder. It's like literally the font of knowledge for everything. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> I, I I always find it's good to bring him chocolate as well. That's and the damn good <laughs> pub quiz master too. <laughs> so Jamie, which uh, which campus are you in? Because I don't, um, wait, are you IT or are you teaching and or or both? Are you? Yeah, I'm in the IT side, uh, the support staff. I'm based at Paisley Campus. In Paisley, I was, yeah. I was uh, cool. quite, quite bank pre merger, uh, and then I went away and came back. Uh, sure. So, uh, yeah, based in Paisley, team centralised in Paisley, my in that area is uh, centralised in Paisley. Yeah, yeah. No, I should say, I'm, I should say, as, I'm, I'm on this as a from a teaching perspective, but I'm a support staff as well. I'm a technician up at West College Scotland at, the, at Clyde Bank. So, yeah, I have a lot, uh, uh, have a regular um, contact with IT up there as well. So, yes. That's good to know. It's good to know another contact. That's great. Yeah, thank you. I can do better than Simon and Clyde Bank, though. I know. <laughs> they're, they're, they're fabulous. Yes. Gosh, you remember campuses. Uh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful <laughs> yeah. Campus yeah. yeah. Well, it, w w just thinking of what's been said by Caroline um, about supporting the young people who have got some disadvantage. One very important thing is about. The, you having social presence with these young people and email doesn't cut it so you, you do need to find a communication channel with them that allows them to feel that you are alongside them and with them and supporting totally. them. Totally. No, so I, I've actually, I've, I've had to, I've actually had to, well, not had to, I've been quite happy to, I've been, you know, Skype, business Skype, phoning them, the ones that can't um, access at the moment. And I think that's definitely something, you know, that, why we'll be encouraging if I have this class again next um, year is to sort of make sure because they're a lot more a little bit more resistant to be in contact with you on a sort of um, online basis so that's that was a bit of a gap there really that we only had email addresses none of them were kind of um, interacting with Moodle or anything like that so that would you know that's something that would um, try and encourage more next time but yeah I've been basically phoning people, scribing answers, doing that sort of thing, because for some people it's, yeah, completely impossible for them just now. So, yeah. And I don't know, what, Walter, what other kind of, what, what other kind of means do you, because that is going to be a huge department that's going to um, be, you know, having to think of um, different ways to deliver teaching where there are lots of vulnerable students who, who, who maybe won't be wanting to come on campus anytime soon. What's, is there any, any other thoughts on where, what, what that might be or look like at all? No. No, I think I'll pass that one. Yeah, over. no, totally. Short <laughs> hand up. I don't know if that's coming on this one or with a new subject. Yeah. Jean? Um, no, I was just wondering um, when you deliver to vulnerable students, um, I was told by the college that we, at the moment, um, we can't. We, can't do a Zoom or a Teams with somebody that's um, at school age because I've got some foundation apprenticeships that I work with, but I'm actually not allowed to um, to do a Zoom or a Teams with them unless there's other people present. So it's just obviously for GDPR yeah. and things. So. Yeah, no, the, not, none of the students that I have for that are of that in that 
age bracket, oh, I think. Right, it's okay. certainly not so it's not something, it's just more to do with the fact that um they were just you know, at the beginning of the class, I remember sort of saying, you know, who would like to, um, who'd feel comfortable? It was a digital skills class I was doing. So, right. it was, you know, who's who's comfortable emailing me? And a lot of them just weren't. So I was just, okay, well, we'll just, we'll work in class. So then obviously when this happened, it was like, oh, right, okay. Now that's going to become a problem. Yeah. So, but no, so it wasn't so much that. It was, it was more people's, how confident they felt about, um, um, right. yeah, that, yeah. I think there's an interesting question there, and it's come across my radar a number of times. Um, um, I've suggested within JISC, we have quite a lot of staff, and I know a good number, um, but what we don't have is any way of readily looking up how people prefer to be engaged with. And I know I know people who have, have um, uh, that, uh, for reason of dyslexia, would not prefer a long email from me. And if I know that, I'm quite happy to click on one of our um, instant communication mechanisms and talk to them. And likewise, I know that some people suffer from perhaps an anxiety um, issue and uh, or disorder, and um, and it, they would prefer an email rather than synchronous contact. Um, and I do wonder for learners as well whether we need to get in a position of somehow knowing for with learners, and and it could be taking into account um, the sort of um, the protection GDPR questions as well, or uh, and more to do with um, I suppose safeguarding. But uh, safeguarding. what are the appropriate mechanisms for each one, but also what their preferred mechanism is? That's a yeah. minute. Plan. So one one of the things that I I know for um, Caroline is. <clears throat> when you're working with certain community groups, one of the issues is the digital poverty that we covered in an, an earlier session. And it's, it's about maybe creating the content in multiple formats that can reach people in different ways. So I, I, I know that in one of the schools that I help out with, one of the things that they do is they have uh, a basic instruction set um, that they send out to their pupils. And it, it takes the form of a, a Word document that just really lists what they have to do for the day. And that gets sent out to, to all, of, uh, all of the households because uh, a basic sort of level of connection, they, they, they can receive email. Now on, on top of that, what the, the teacher does is they, they record them talking through the sheet just to say what they have to do for the day. And they just say like, okay, so today, hi everyone, this is what we're, I'd, I'd like you to do. And they, they show the video on screen and they've got their face in the corner and they just talk through the kind of things that they're looking for, gives a bit of encouragement. Now that's sent out as, as a video and you can join the live stream during the day or you can watch the recording. Then as a third option, it's also sent out as an audio file. Because again, if you don't need to capture the whole video and you're just sending audio, then it cuts down on the amount of data that you're using. And for some households, that makes a significant difference. So in, in one go, if you can design some of your interaction so that it can be split into multiple formats and cater to a wider audience, it, it makes a significant difference. I mean, every, everyone likes um, the whole video conferencing. If you have the ability to access that and you can do it, but even like moving away from video and just going to audio for some people is a massive thing. Hearing someone's voice and just mm. talking to them makes that personal connection. And the difficulty that most um, teaching staff have initially is the, the idea of recording their voice and wanting to sound perfect. Um, and uh, the best advice I can give is it comes from a project called the Sounds Good Project that ran, <laughs> oddly enough, about 12 years ago, I think now. Um, but it, one of the key findings it had from it was that if you are a lecturer and you're communicating to students, the best piece of advice you have is when you start recording something, press record once and just go until you finish and stop at the end and send whatever it is you have in the middle. Like if you cough, if you splutter, if someone knocks on the door and shouts if you want a cup of tea or whatever, leave it in because it makes you sound more human and we are human. And if, if we were talking to our students face to face, these things happen. Um, if you make a mistake when you're explaining something, stop for a second, go, no, nope, wait a minute, that's not right. This is what you should be doing. That's, that's fine. And what the research showed was that students really connected with that kind of communication, more so than somebody reading a word perfect script to, to, to say something. So I, I would consider multiple formats. I would consider video if you can, but also audio because that's really good. Um, it, it has a lot of the benefits and cuts down on the data and also have that kind of email paper written option as well. So 
that's re- that's really really helpful thank you that's yeah that's that's really good that's, yeah that, that is excellent advice yeah. i would wholly go with that kenji I, I feel Jane's, it's Jane's turn to shine. <laughs> now, it is, that's it. You know, it, it, it was coming, Jane. That was... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... What... No, that, that's very helpful what you said there about the audio, obviously cutting down there, you know, and sending multiple ways of communicating. I think that's very, um, very, very helpful. Um, and the fact that, you know, you're right, you just talk and don't worry about what's going on in the background because it's going to be natural so you can engage with them and they can relate to you. So I think that's a great bit of advice. Thank you. I, I, I don't think praise is going to get you out of actually... <laughs> Nickers. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something you're doing within the work-based assessment. There must be yeah. something. So what's, what's, what's challenging at this point in time? Is there anything that's a bit challenging, like working from a distance now? Is there anything that... Um... Well, just obviously some of the candidates who have been furloughed and can't do any work, um, some of them obviously they, they can't then, because it's naturally generating evidence, so they can't actually like do an email or show me their spreadsheet because they're furloughed. Um, so there's a couple of challenges like that, but um, and a couple of the foundation apprenticeship students just are actually... Um, uh, don't really want to do anything because they just think oh college is closed that's it you know um so I've been ringing them quite early on the morning and getting them out of bed which is not going down very well but um yeah so so there's a few little challenges there but overall I mean I work with a lot of different uh, from management candidates to business admin and stuff like that but the so some of them um who have uh, finding themselves have got more time on the hand so they're actually really really engaging in their qualification and I've been inundated with assessments inundated um I think this is the first week in the nine or ten where I've lost track that I've actually my inbox is really down which is fantastic um so a lot of people are taking the opportunity whilst they are to do, to do some education so that's great for us um but being mainly, I've mainly been using Teams. Um, this is my first time on Zoom, actually. So, um, yeah, so it's, um, I was actually too busy playing about with the stuff earlier on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, um, so I use Teams a lot. Um, candidates really, really like it. Um, they seem to engage. It is nice to see a face. I really do think that is quite nice. Although I've blanked mine out this morning because... Um, <laughs> I thought there was going to be hundreds of people on here. I thought we were just sort of, you know, <laughs> I thought I don't need to be seen. <laughs> um, so, yes, I'm using Teams, teams a lot. Um, and it's working really, really well. Really, really well. In that case, I, I just have one question from what you've said. So, mm-hmm. so you sometimes you do wake people up in the morning. And, and I understand with the foundation apprenticeships um, and, and some of those areas, sometimes um, some people do feel it's they're on a vacation. Do you have any um, tips around how do, you, like, how do you engage with those people? How do you, how do you nudge them in the right direction? Um, well, it's what, what most teachers probably do, just all positive stuff. It's all encouragement, how wonderful they are, and let's use this time wisely. Um, and just a, a lot of constant, oh my God, I think some of them now know my phone number. So I've now, I've now opted to go from my work mobile to my own mobile and they answer it. Because <laughs> they wonder who's calling. <laughs> New phone number. Um, yeah, so it's, obviously there's, there's only so many you can, you know, you can actually make engage. But you do, you do try, you do try to get them to, to engage. Um, just about seeing the positives of the whole thing and let's see what we can get done while, while we're under lockdown. So I told you I'd take more than a minute if I started talking, didn't I? And thank you very much for all that input. Uh, we've dealt with some questions there about assessment and engagement and, uh, and how we work through uh, this period of lockdown. Um, hope you enjoyed the session and um, catch up with you soon. <laughs>